When I make mistakes, they're usually expensive ones. I'm making a protective radome for a microwave propagation testing antenna system that's going to be installed on a hill in the southwest of England. I decided to use PTFE tube for the radome because, well, why not? Sadly, I failed to read the small print and bought two inch tube with a wall that's way too thick. Instead of doing the right thing and returning the tube to the supplier, I decided to machine the outside wall in the active section to a third of the thickness, but from the inside. Sounds simple, but the antenna that I'm protecting is two foot long. I tried using a boring bar and the consequences were disastrous. Complete fail. Even using my comedy size boring bar. Thanks for the donation, Pete. So I had another coffee and decided to make a special boring tool. What could possibly go wrong? You don't need to answer that, thanks, Amy. I'm making the head of the tool from EN8 steel bar. It machines well and I don't need to harden it as it's only going to be running inside a PTFE or other slippery plastic bore. The cutting tool is a simple manual grind with reliefs and a 5 degree rake angle. It's ground from 8mm round cobalt high speed steel. I plan to lock it in place with an M6 set screw or grub screw if you prefer. All I need to do is make the head and fit it to a shaft in the tailstock. Simples. Except. My lathe bed's only just long enough to hold the tube and it won't go more than a few inches into the Pratt Bernard 3 jaw. The headstock tube's only 40 millimetres. Oh dear. Well, I've dug myself into this hole so I might as well keep on digging. How about making the shaft in sections with threaded sockets and spigots? Then I could make the cut in stages. Brilliant. Ominous foreboding alert. Have you really thought this through? It'll be fine, Amy. Fine. Right, let's face off this EN8 and drill it for an M8 by 1.25mm thread. That'll need a 6.8mm cobalt stub drill. Quick chamfer and then I'll start the thread using a spiral flute machine tap in the tailstock, but only for part of the hole so I don't spin the tap in the chuck. I'll finish the thread using this nasty janky hand tap wrench. The machine tap's got a short tapered lead in, so I drilled the hole deeper than necessary and cut the thread an extra 4mm deep so the spigot threads won't bottom out. I need a bit of relief for chip clearance, so I reduce the diameter of the rear of the boring head and then machine a slightly undersized section for where the tool's inserted to reduce the risk of chip packing during a cut. This parting tool takes a 2mm MGMN double-ended insert. I don't have any right biased inserts, I usually re-grind the inserts after they start to dull using a diamond wheel, but I've shattered a few recently so I'm having to use a new one, so the cut's parallel to the workpiece and it'll leave a pip on the part rather than on the stock in the chuck.
I didn't check the measurement and of course I ran out of tool before the cut was finished. So I laid a board across the lathe bedways and put the cold chest gearbox to 22 RPM with the power off and used a hacksaw to finish the parting cut by hand. Comedy length bar stock there. After rechucking the workpiece, I faced it off to length and gave the corner a generous chamfer. Off camera I also gave it a 1 degree taper for the first 3 millimeters or so to help with insertion into the PTFE tube. Off camera means Neil forgot to press record. He's fooling nobody. Next up's making the sectional rods from 16mm bar stock. I faced off and then machined the spigot to the finished size of an M8 by 1.25 thread. Nice chamfer on the end of the spigot and a very light deburr of the step to the outside diameter and we're ready to cut the thread using a split high speed steel die in a sliding tailstock die holder. With the lays in reverse I gave the threads a quick clean up with a wire brush and then a polish with rather crumbly Gary Flex because I've run out of Bright Boy and Kratex, damn it. The threads were cut to size by the full form die but I like to dress the threads lightly to ensure there aren't any burrs that the brush and abrasive has missed. Next job's parting off to length.
and excellent. No major disasters so far. Face off, use a centre drill because I'm too idle to fetch a spotting drill, then back to using the 6.8mm high speed steel cobalt stub to make the M8 tapping hole. This time I'm relieving the top of the hole with an 8.5mm drill so I don't have to put a gutter at the base of the thread on the spigots. Ask me how I know that cutting a gutter weakens the thread to the point where if it galls up when you tighten it because you didn't spot a stray chip, it'll snap the threaded spigot clean off. Yeah, it was all going so well. Luckily, it drilled out beautifully using a left-hand drill and some help from a blowtorch. I knew things were going too well, but I'm chalking that one up as a win. No damage done to the part, just another bite taken from my small remaining reserve of self-esteem. Huge thanks to my lovely Patreon and coffee supporters for helping to fund this channel and make it so I don't have to advertise male grooming products or dodgy VPNs to keep making videos. That lovely brown earwax is CT90 cutting compound. Gorgeous stuff. Link in the description. As I mentioned before, the Spiral Flute M8 tap has a three thread lead in taper, so I'll run a hand plug tap right down to the bottom of the hole to make certain the spigot won't bind up before it's all the way in. A quick test fit in the boring head shows the threads a nice running fit and the shoulder seats cleanly. Now it's time to mill some flats in the 16mm round bar for a spanner or wrench if you prefer to tighten and loosen the threaded sections. For some unknown reason I chose a rather old and battered slot drill with brazed carbide teeth so the finish wasn't as nice as it should be. I nipped the bar in an ER40 collet block with a square body so I could flip it 180 degrees repeatably. The 13mm spanner fits nicely. Using my 2020 hindsight spidey sense, I realised much later that a pair of flats at each end of the bar would have been a great idea. If you're enjoying this content, please click the like button so YouTube will impose it on other unsuspecting souls. Right, all done, and now all I need to do is fit an MT3 Morse taper bar into the tailstock and screw on the extension bars and off we go. Oh wait two threaded sockets. Also, the MT3 taper rod has an M6 tapped hole, not M8. Oh dear. I found a bit of M8 all thread and chucked it up, then machined off the original thread to the max diameter of an M6 outside thread.
Now the spigot's the right size. I can thread it M6 by one millimeters using the sliding tailstock die holder. I really must get a new ball on that tension arm. It needs a flat on the side of the cutting head to make it easier to get the hole in exactly the right place, so I'm using the same rather worn carbide cutter to form the flat. I'm using a trusty old friction edge finder to centre the spindle so I can drill and ream the 8mm hole for the cutter. The odd thou mill or bunch of micrometers doesn't really matter for this application. Having found the centre, let's reset the Y axis on the mill digital readout and lock the Y axis position to keep the tools on the centre line of the head. I'm using a 7.5mm self centering stub drill and then an M8 parallel flute machine reamer to finish the cross hole. After rotating head 90 degrees along its axis, I've drilled a 5mm hole for an M6x1 tap to take the transverse set screw, or grub screw. Quick clean up and deburr and we're ready to cut some PTFE from the inside of the tube. Except I made a really silly rookie error. Set the cutter to about half the finished depth and did a trial plunge for three inches or so. It worked brilliantly. I decided to go for broke and cut to the full depth for the rest of the length. So I removed the cutter head and reset the stick out to get to the right finished internal diameter. Then I popped it back into the tube and tried to cut the larger hole. Of course, the head was now not rubbing inside the enlarged diameter for the first three inches, and with PTFE being rather wobbly stuff, the cut went eccentric and made a proper mess. I bodged up a pressure roller as I still don't own a steady rest or a travelling steady, and tried again. It was still a bit out of true, but after that three inches, it centralised beautifully and was back to cutting true. However, the first bit of the tube was now rather skew whiff and wibbled back and forth by a few millimetres. Let's pretend we hadn't seen that. The end plug will cover a multitude of sins. Possibly. Spoiler alert for future video. It kind of worked. Sort of. Ish. Look, it's going to be up a mast on top of an isolated hilltop water pumping station inside a secure compound. So who's going to know? Apart from me and my client and the local sparrows. And all of you, obviously. But I'm sure I can trust you to keep it a secret, right? Right. Nothing to see here.
Making the cut only took about two minutes compared with the hours it took to make the tool, but anyone who thinks that's a waste doesn't understand the enormous fun to be had working out how to make this little contraption. And when it turned out to work quite well, that was just an extra bonus. I left about 40 millimeters of the original wall thickness to strengthen the mounting into the support collar. You can see it down at the bottom of the hole here. Huge thanks to my most excellent Patreon supporters who make these videos possible. You folks are extra cool. The antennas now installed inside its cosy ray dome on that lonely hilltop, along with a mounting collar, plate, mast, spigger, and rotatable waveguide clamps. More about making those in the next video in this series, which will appear up there.